Hello guys, welcome to EZTV Presents Tech View, another episode. And this is actually, uh, I'm planning to have make a series of video to have to show you guys how you can have your own uh, virtual environment, own virtual home lab, or you can say BMR home lab. So, and as, uh, based on the series, uh, this is my first video. Like, um, I already made another video with uh, three physical hosts, but um, I know it's not possible for everybody to have three physical um, server at your home. So if you can buy only one server, with one server, how are you gonna build your complete VMware environment? Like uh, everything. So I, you see on, on the screen, there is a design, architectural design for creating a home lab with one physical server. But actually for creating an environment, you need at least minimum five uh, to have a standard, like minimum standard virtual environment, you should have at least five physical server. But as personal, it's not possible to have five physical server at home. So that's why I'm showing you guys with one physical machine, how you are gonna build that environment, exactly that environment. So let's get started. And I'm gonna show you actually what you need from the beginning. So this is the design and there's a numbers like starting points from where you're gonna start, right? So before you start building your uh, home lab, you need to have uh, the equipment, the devices, right? So what do you need, the prerequisite, right? So I have a complete list of what you need. What you need, I have a complete list, important information to build your own virtual infrastructure. So this is the, uh, this is the link for Dell server. So you have to have a Dell uh, server. Uh, let's see. You need to have a Dell server. So it's, it can be around like from 300 to $500 in between. It depends on wh wh how much CPU you're choosing. So I will recommend all the time, 128 GB of memory and minimum 16 core. That means uh, with two processor, right? Two into something. You guys already know what does it mean. So Dell PowerEdge or maybe HP, but I will recommend always like a one U rack on the rack, it should be taking one U space. It's gonna be thin and it's look like a pizza box. Uh, so that kind of server you should choose because it's gonna take a uh, less space on your, like whatever the place you're gonna put it uh, in your uh, in your house, like maybe on your uh, living space, maybe on your basement and any higher. So you need some component. First, you need a server, right? So this is the server model I showed you. Uh, actually, I'm not doing any marketing for uh, any kind of vendor or any kind of server. I'm just showing you guys and giving you guys an idea of what kind of server you're gonna buy. So it's, it should be minimum two into like E5 or something. It's, it's a processor model. And the speed, processor speed doesn't matter. You can have at least 2.002, 3 3.00 in between any speed gigahertz speed, but don't compromise with the core, don't compromise with the memory, and also make sure you have enough storage because um, you're not gonna have, because you have to make it create a lot of virtual machine at this minimum uh, uh, 30, to, 30 to 45 virtual machine. So each and every virtual machine that this is gonna act as a physical machine, right? So you need a lot of space. So don't consider it this. If you don't have it, maybe you can buy it separately, but most of the time you should look for whatever is coming with the server. So that's how you're gonna select the server. And all the way down, you should check this one, description, what is coming with. So Dell PowerEdge R620, now the R620 model is priced in between 300 to 500. And processor two into Intel GM processor, two into means uh, two times means uh, it's, it has a two uh, physical processor and each processor has eight cores, so total 16 cores and 32 threads. That means it has a hyper threading enabled. 
and memory 128 GB. Don't compromise with this. Hard drive, four into something, 10K SAS drive, right? So you can have 7.2K, you can have 10K, or you can have 15K. It's a speed. It's up to you. And hard drive trace, RAID system. So RAID system, yeah, you should have a RAID system. And another thing you need to be, uh, you need to be checked, which is remote access controller, which is iDRAC. So if there is any iDRAC license. So this one has iDRAC, iDRAC Express license. If you don't have the license, then you have to buy it and you have to spend another $40 minimum. An interface uh, controller is make sure you have four port, one GB NIC card, four port, but not mod, not it's like two uh, POE or two 10 gig, you, because you, do, you don't have 10 gig network, so you don't have 10 gig switch. So make sure it's, everything is one gig. And if I can show you on the server here, uh, if you look at here, server, you see, it has a four uh, here, four port, right? It's a one gig, and this one is for iDRAC. This one is for iDRAC. So that's it for about the server. And you need uh, a, a switch because I know and I believe all of you guys have a home router and home router doesn't have that much port, but if you want to connect because if server itself, it's net total five now, ethernet connection. Five. Here is four. Here is another one. Five, right? So that's why you need to have a, this kind of uh, switch with eight port, right? So the first number port you're gonna connect with your router port, and then rest of the connection will go to your server. And then how you gonna connect? You need some cables, right? So here's the Ethernet cable. So if you here's if only five cables, but if you need more, you can buy more. It's not gonna cost you that much money. It's 90 to uh, like it's $20 around. And this one is at uh, $35. And the server price actually varies. You can you can check online if you can get more speed or more hard drive, then the price will be high. And if you can aff afford it, I, I will always recommend to have it because, uh, and, and also don't, don't go below 128 GB. You can go, more than 120 GB, maybe 192, if possible, but the price will be high. Anyway, um, so it's up to you because if you go up this one, the price will be up. Say 2.7 or 2.3 uh, point something gigahertz speed. So, but it's not like, um, um, it's not mandatory. You have to have 2.7 and 2.2 is too much bad. It's not like that. It's enough is enough. As long as you have 16 core and 128 GB of memory, and also you need a hard drive. So if you have more hard drive space, like a terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, that, that will be really good for you because you need space. Otherwise you have to buy separately. All right. And then, um, and then another one is for having like a, a, what is called? the share store, uh, uh, NASA storage. So, because BMR support share storage and share storage can be NAS at network attached storage and also can have uh, iSCSI SAN storage and also FC SAN storage. So FC means fiber connect. And I cannot show you on the lab because fiber connect device is really, really expensive. So in here we can do uh, as a lab, we can do with iSCSI SAN because I have a software tools. With this software, we can create a SAN storage. I'll show you guys step by step. And, and then we can assign that SAN storage to our environment. But before you have the SAN storage configuration, if you have a, this kind of device, you can store your personal file, but, and also it's gonna be just connect with your, uh, uh, with your switch like this one, one connection, you can put it here and another, another part of the um, uh, cables you can put on the uh, cloud storage, that's storage. You can put it anywhere in, at your home. So in this device, it has, a, it has two terabyte of space, plus it has a capability to create a NAS storage. You see here, the personal, uh, personal network attached storage, NAS. So we need this feature. So whenever you have this server, 
This one is not mandatory, it's optional, it's up to you. And also I figured out a use server, a use uh, storage because um, I don't want to spend you too much money for this. Uh, so $70 is enough just for having the real flavor, having the real flavor, all right? So whenever you have all those equipments, and then you can follow this. So you have internet at your home and you have a, your uh, router provided by your internet provider, which is your ISP. And then from there, you're gonna take another connections to your switch, which is this switch, Netgear switch or right here. You can connect uh, the port number one. And then from there, you see here four connections, you're gonna connect with the uh, server, which is this, which is this, this four port. And another cable you're gonna connect and the cable you want to connect with your um, iDRAC. And after that, what are you going to do? You have to configure the iDRAC first. So that's why the zero one is iDRAC. You have to configure iDRAC first. Whenever you have a server, you need to power on the machine. And then your first job is to configure iDRAC. Now, how are you going to configure the iDRAC? Right? So I'll show you step by step. But in here, um, I have a separate, complete separate video. If you go to the YouTube, and check IZTV International and go to the videos options. Then from here, I have actually mixed video here. So you have to figure out which one is for what. And I, I have a separately open here uh, video um, here. Okay, so red system, iDRAC. Okay, this is the iDRAC configuration. So iDRAC configuration on Dell PowerEdge server. iDRAC configuration on here, I believe I, this one. I drag configuration on Dell PowerEdge server one year ago. So you can you, you can check this this one, it's total 10 minutes video, and it will show you step by step how you're gonna set it up. So uh, I'm just giving an, an just intro here. I'm not doing this one because I already did it. So I'm gonna connect directly because if I reboot it, it's gonna take time to start everything again. So I'm gonna start from a uh, RAID system. I'm gonna start from the RAID system, but I'll, I'll, I'll sh I'm just going to show you here, like huh. So what are you gonna do actually? So whenever you have all the equipments, whenever you have all the equipments, you just need to connect like four cables here, right? One cable on your iDRAC and then your power cable, then just turn on, like power on the server. So on the server, you can see here, there is a button. So you can just push the button here and server gonna be start. And you see here, you have a, uh, you have a hard drive space here. So when you power on, oh, make sure, don't forget to, don't forget, you see here, there is a port here, you, you need to connect. You need to connect a monitor here because without monitor, this is pretty old system. So the the uh, the latest model monitor not gonna work with this. Uh, you have if your your monitor has this port, then it's support. Okay, so you have to connect this with the monitor because you need to see what's going on inside, right? When you power on. So when you power on, the first job is to configure the iJack. This one, you have to provide an IP address. So based on our plan here, based on our plan here, lab design. So IP should be 192.168.1.9, but it's not mandatory. You have to have it. Whatever the IP range at your home, you should have it, right? You, you can have it. But before I do that, I want to show you one more thing, which is um, actually network device, VLAN. So it's a lot of stuff you need to know, but um, do one thing. Uh, I'm going to actually run my uh, IDEC video here. So you can actually watch. So what are you gonna do? First, after you turn on and look at on your monitor, okay, all right, so. So this is this is the screen you're gonna see. You have to 
when you like when you start the machine, you're gonna see something. So you're gonna see, yeah, you're gonna see you know, because I already logged in there. That's why. But you will not have this one before you configure. You will not see this interface because I logged in through the I drag, but you will not able to see this screen. You cannot access it through the browser before you configure. So you have to look at on your screen, your monitor, your monitor, right? So, so when you start it on the monitor, you're gonna see like this. So you have to wait and you have to wait. So whenever you come here, you see it's F10, F12, here's F12, actually F2, I already pressed F2. So F2, F10, F11, so we have to first use job to configure the iDRAC. Configure the iDRAC, you have to press F2. And then it will go and see, see entering the system setup. It will go for the system setup. And then what do you need to go? And it's gonna be good automatically. You have to just wait. You have to just wait. Whenever it's loaded to here, you have to go to the system BIOS. And from the system BIOS, no, sorry, it's not system BIOS. Um, on the From the list, you have to go to the iDRAC settings because your first job is iDRAC settings. So if you're working for a company and you put the server and the rack, everything is, you need to connect all of the all of the cable, record cables and everything. And you turn on the machine, your first job to open your KBM or it may be monitor, individual monitor, whatever you have to attach because the first job is to physically, you have to have a physical monitor, you have to have a physical device, you have to be physically present there. And after you complete the iDRAC settings and after that, you don't need to be a physical, you can access everything remotely. That's what I'm gonna show you. So our first job is to configure iDRAC, go to the iDRAC session and then, and from the iDRAC settings, you have to figure out the network. See here is the network. So you have to go to the network option and then hit enter. And then you're gonna see uh, enable NIC. Um, so I'm going to move this, this into here now, for now. So you have to move. I'm going to just, okay. So NIC selection, MAC address, auto, yeah, it's nothing here. You just need to go down, like press your down arrow. Go down, go down. Okay, you just need to look at for IPv4 settings. IPv4 settings. So on the IPv4 settings, enable IPv4. And in here, it should be enabled. If it is disabled, then you have to enable it. Enable DHCP, but I think by default, sometimes it's enabled. You have to disable it because you want, you don't want to have anything. You don't have you don't want to have anything. You don't have you don't have anything as a DHCP because DHCP is going to be changed, right? So your target is to have. Uh, what is called a uh, static IP, right? So if you're gonna put the static IP here, so based on our plan, you're gonna have 192.168.1.9, right? Mine is different. Don't worry about it. Maybe in your case, you should use, will be different. It's up to your uh, home network settings. All right. And then 255.255.255 is the C classes address. Most of the case at home, we use C class. And it's based on the classes, and our subnet, the subnet mask will be changed. And also the default getter, what the default getter you have, you're gonna put it this one, but in your case, maybe it's gonna be 192.168.1.1. And, and then, and then your um, DNS preference. So if whatever the DNS server for, for you, but based on our plan, uh, we should have 192.168.1.4, and another one is 192.168.1.4. Ten dot four, based on our plan, right? Two submit we're gonna use different submit. So 
So that's what you want to do. So skip, exit from here, reboot the machine. That's it. That's all. That's all. That's all. Yes, I just setting yes. And then reboot it. So after the reboot, you don't need to be on site, on the data center, or maybe at your home. Not you need to be present in front of your server. And also you don't need any more the physical monitor. Now come back to your desk and Open your laptop, open your browser, laptop browser, maybe Google Chrome or whatever. That's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm not going this one too, right? So first, now my iDrug is set up, right? So I can log in my server. So I'm going to show you actually how I can log in after I set it up the iDrug. So I'll, um, I'll, give, I'll provide you guys the link of my uh, individual iDrug video. And also it's recorded on this session also. Um, you're gonna get it. Um, I will put it on the description box. Um, so let's let's move this one to somewhere here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to log in, right? I already I have a server. So I provided the IP address eight. Our plan was we're supposed to have IP address is nine, right? Uh, no, sorry, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so it's eight. Um, then, then, whenever you do eight, what it shows? It shows your connection is not private, right? Don't worry about it. Click on advanced and then click on proceed to this. Proceed to this and save. It's okay because you don't have license. That's why. And now you are able to see the interface. You are able to see what? The interface. You are able to see the interface of what? iDrag, the one you set it up, right? Now you are simply using your browser, right? Then type the IP address, whatever the IP address you assign for your iDrag. Based on our plan, we're supposed to provide IP address is nine, right? But anyway, in my at my home, my settings I provided eight. It doesn't matter whatever the IP you're gonna provide. You should just write it down. IP here, HTTPS colon slash slash your uh, iDrag IP address. And then hit enter. It's gonna give you these options. So the username is root, and the password Calvin C A L V I N. So it's a default password for. Okay, Notepad. Um, Kelvin, C A L V I N, all lowercase. This is a default password, root password for all I direct. So th this is a common and hit submit. And immediately after you logged in, it's going to show you do you want to change it? Yes. If you are doing these settings for any kind of organization for your company, you're supposed to change the password. But I'm not changing because it's my home lab. I don't care about it because well, several times I need to change it. So I say keep default password. All right. So uh, almost I'm uh, logged in. So when you logged in, you're gonna see everything here. You're gonna see everything here status of your machine. Um, eight, nine, ten, okay. I feel I have some other server. I don't focus on this one, the one I'm checking right now. If I want to make sure I'm working on the right server or not. Dot Nine, not 99, oh, it's not 99, it's only nine. Okay, advance, proceed. Uh, root, Calvin, 
and I have another server, 192.168.1.10, oof, not 102, it's 10. Okay, advance and proceed. Okay. Keep. So I want to make sure don't don't follow this one, right? Uh, I'm just looking like I'm doing the same uh, right host or wrong host. I'm just checking the root and Calvin. All right, look like this is running host, keep, okay. Okay, so this is the host actually, so I'm going to canceled out the new to server. So this is actually right host because the reason I was confused, I had some battery issues. Now it shows, okay, that's why. All right, so in, no worries. So what you should do when you log into the iDRAC, now you're accessing iDRAC, your server, physical server from your browser. Maybe you are now sitting your third floor and your, your main physical server is in your basement maybe. And you are, you are, you are, from your upstairs, you are browsing from your laptop, right? So launch, and before you do this launch, make sure you go to the settings and, okay. Okay. okay so from your settings, make sure you have, you have to have this one, net uh, HTML5. By default, is native. So plugins all the time is HTML5. That's all you need to be, make sure. And then you're gonna get this one, right? When I click on HTML5, I got this one, but sometimes it's blocked by your browser. Yeah, you're gonna have a cross sign here. You have to allow it, and then you have to relaunch it again. Close, close it and relaunch it again. After allow, you have to close, then relaunch it again. So mine is here, after you reboot it, within short time, you have to look at on the screen. This is your monitor. You remember, previously you had a monitor, physical monitor, now this is your virtual monitor. And after you reboot it, it's gonna show you here. So now our target is to do what? RAID system, right? On the hard drive, you have to need, you need to do a RAID system. So the Mac, because we have only one server, right? So I have here RAID calculator. So how many uh, physical hard drive you have? So for installing, for installing uh, ESXi, you don't need to have that much storage. 10 gigabyte of storage is enough, is enough for a uh, ESXi host. But nowadays in the market, you're gonna get a more than 100 gigabyte of hard drive, right? maybe 150, 60, or maybe 200 or 300, whatever. So the minimum hard drive, the one has you have minimum, or maybe you can buy from, um, you know, what is called, Amazon or maybe eBay, the cheaper one, just for having your uh, ESXi. Uh, so, and rest of the hard drive, you're gonna make a great system. So first, for the ESX, for, for the one, only one disk, right? One disk, it has maybe, maybe say 300 gigabyte of storage. Actually they're looking for terabyte, right? So you have to have like say 0.3 terabyte. Okay. So 300, that means 300 terabyte or 300 gigabyte of space in here is mentioned about the yeah, terabyte. So this is just a calculator. I'm just showing you what you should do. So rate zero, rate zero, you can do for, because it's the minimum one here is required. Okay. So with, with red zero, one terabyte, um, one disk. So you're gonna get exactly this must be positive and at least two disks to require 
Actually, where zero one is fine. You can have just only one. It's fine. I will show you. But if you wants to have, if you have a multiple disk and rest of the disk, what are you gonna do? So I suggest if you have another four extra drive, make that drive uh, with RAID five and calculate it. So you're gonna get how much space? Number of, oh, sorry, number of disk is four disks. So RAID five actually you need at minimum five, uh, four, three. If you have a three drive, you can calculate. So, so if you have, I'm, I'm showing you for RAID one, you need only one drive. So I have a complete video about the RAID system. I'm not discussing that much on the RAID system. Actually, what you should do. So I have a complete RAID video here. I'll share. I'll put it on the description box, but I'm just showing you. So you should do the RAID five because you need maximum storage with at least one drive failure because in some case, if only one hard drive is failed, so you will get um, this. And if you have a four hard drive calculated, you're gonna get 12 terabyte of space. It's supposed to be, if you have four disks with each disk has a four terabyte, that means it's supposed to be 16 terabyte, but out of 16, you're gonna get only 12 because you are doing rate five. So you have one drive for tolerance. All right, so we're gonna start doing this. We're gonna start doing this. So this is my RAID system and I'm going to dissolve everything. So control R, what you should do? Whenever it's booting in the, in, and it shows everything, previously we press F2, right? Now you don't need to have to, but you have to follow and monitor this screen. Whenever it shows press control R, you should do control, press the control key from your keyboard and then control R and it will take you to the red configuration. So I am going to maximize this window, control R, okay. So this is the RAID system. So I have total 136 gigabyte of space, one hard drive and another three hard drive I have here, right? So now I can do my RAID system here. All right, so I just added one more drive here, one more uh, hard disk. So now I have four, right? So the first one I already set it up, it said it's already configured and this one is unconfigured, right? So this one have a ESX installed. And what I should do, just let me check actually, do I have the ESXi here? Well, the download. Wait. So I don't have ESXi. But if I go, if I go like, and download that's nothing so anyway um so just give me one second let me copy one of the uh just give me one second all right so uh i'm gonna do everything from the scratch i told you guys so uh, I'm going to delete this desk. Uh, if you want to delete it, you have to just click here and then F2 from your keyboard. Then it said delete, just down arrow delete. You selected the delete option, delete BD, virtual uh, drive. Hit enter and click here, yes. Yes, okay. Okay, all right. So now there is no partitions, nothing, it's just a all the hard drive is showing it's unconfigured, right? So now if you want to configure what you should do quickly, 
you have to go to. So my tracker is the first drive because I need a small drive for installing ESXi. I don't need that much space for ESXi, right? So the first drive I want to dedicate it. But whenever you do for your organization, make sure you'll have two drive at least and make a RAID 1, make a RAID 1 mirroring, right? With two disks, make a mirroring. I'll show you here what you should do. But now I'm doing only one because it's a home lab. So RAID 0, right? RAID 0 is by default selected. So you can just select any, uh, go up here. You can select one of the drive. And if you select two drives, it's going to be add the storage, whatever you have. And if you go for mirroring, like RAID 1, you actually, in your real environment, you should do RAID 1 for installing SXI. And you should have at least two drive minimum. Say, for example, this one. Okay, at least two drive, right? But I'm not doing two drive now. And I'm not doing RAID 1, I'm going to do RAID 0. So RAID 0, I'm choosing 1 because I don't have enough storage device like a hard drive. So, and I can say this one is for the SXI. Or you can say OS. Or say, actually you can say OS. Name doesn't matter. Whatever the name you have, you can you can use it. All right. You should press the tab, tab, tab. Okay. So you can say OS or operating system. OS. And click OK. Hit the tab button. Okay, hit okay. And then with the left arrow, click okay. It's taking a little bit of time. Okay, hit okay. All right, so we have created one drive with red zero. And now we have left how many? Four, right? So you just go up, uh, up arrow, click up arrow and go to the, the top one and then hit F2. And then you can say create a new BD already selected, hit enter. And here change, hit enter, change the rate to five, rate five, because we have target to do it, rate five. At least we should, we'll have one disk failure will be uh, capable, like if one drive, one hard disk is failed, still our storage gonna be work. So you, you, ha you will have enough time to replace with the, uh, uh, you can purchase maybe new one and you replace the, the bad one. And in the meantime, you will not have any kind of effect, no outage, no nothing. So that's why I highly recommend to go with Red 5. But if in your organization, maybe you can do something else with maybe Red 6, maybe Red 10. Maybe in the Red 6, you will get two drive failure. So you'll be able to afford two drive failure. So I'm going to select all because I'm doing rate five and I'm getting 2513, which is will make 2.5 terabyte of storage. And I'm going to make name is like, um, whatever the host is gonna be host, master host, right? Host data store, host, Something by our data store, data store, whatever. Hit OK. Name doesn't matter. It's it up to you how you're going to name it. It's a local data store on the server. All right. So our configuration is done. Now we have only two partition. One drive is going to be dedicated for installing. ESXi, which is 136.12 gigabyte. And another RAID with, with RAID 5, we have almost 2.5 terabyte, or you can say 2513.25 gigabyte. This one. I'm talking about this one, this RAID 5. 
All right. So now I can go back from here. I don't need this screen anymore. I can reboot this system and then I can start. Uh, so install the ESXi, but for Cisco UCS, for HP server, for Dell server, if you want to install uh, ESXi, 6.7, 6.7 or 8, whatever, based on the compatibility, you have to download the ESXi hypervisor ISO file from the VMware, right? From the VMware, but you have to do the vendor customize. Vendor customize means if it is HP, then it's HP customized. If it is Dell, then Dell customized. So how you can download, I'm going to show you shortly. Uh, you have to go to Google, just Google it. Say ESXi, ESXi, uh, 6.7, uh, Dell customize, DOWN, LOID download. Just hit enter. Okay, 6.7 actually. Dell customize, okay. So now you see here Dell. You can go here, Dell customize, go the link, and they're gonna provide you some link. You can download the Dell customizable ESX image file, click here, then then whenever you click there, it will take you to the another, it is providing the another link. Say my BMR download. Okay, so my BMR download. So you can go download Dell EMC customize ESXi image file from BMR website, or you can say my BMR download. Any place, any place. If you go, my BMR, you have to go to actually my BMR.com. There's no alternative. So I'm going to log in, but I have to provide my credential. But I don't want to show on the screen. And so I'm just pause the video and I'll come back after I log in. All right, so after you logged in, maybe it will take you to the different screen. Uh, this screen, but you are not able to see the download options. Maybe you can, then you can uh, just cross out. You don't need to sign out, just cross out and then click the link again. So then maybe it will take you to that. No, it still is not taking you to the download site, right? So now what you should do? Uh, you can say uh, ESXi 6.7. Okay, nothing else. Say ESXi 6.7 download. You will be a spare hypervisor ESXi 6.7 download. Okay. Search, download. So we might have provider ESX 7.0 update 3B. This is the I think latest one or whatever the version, it doesn't matter. But anyone click here, okay? It will take you to the page. And from there, so this is BMR file, right? BMR, BMS pair hypervisor ESXi ISO image <clears throat> with BMR tools. So you can, this is the ISO, right? You can download. Now you already, because you already logged in, right? With your account. But, what you can do, this is the latest one, but if, if, you need, if you need a vendor customized, in that case, you should look for custom ISO. Click here, and then click here. You see Dell EMC custom image for SXI 6.7, update three. So if you click here, you're gonna get exactly the latest one. So it's for HP, Cisco, you see here, for all the vendors. Okay, so Dell EMC, actually we are looking this one, right? We just simply click here and you can say download. Actually I have here, maybe this is not the latest one, but this one is the latest one. 
This is the latest one. So I'm going to install the latest one because I need this one. Okay. So this is the way I should download, right? All right. So I have everything. I have everything here, right? So now what I, what I should do? Um, connect a virtual media. Okay. So I have some issues with data store issues that I'm not sure what was the problem. Okay, anyway. So how remotely you can install, how you can remotely install ESXi. So you actually, physically, if you're in data center, you can mount the ISO file in a CD, then you can install the CD or you can um, mount or maybe get a bootable flash drive bootable disk to the ISO file, ESX ISO file, and you can uh, hook up the um, flash drive on the physical server, then you can do that. But those are complicated and legacy system, the old system. But this is pretty easy. You can work remotely if you have a, just a, um, um, a ISO file. So what are you gonna do from your remote I direct remote console. This is the remote monitor, right? From the monitor, virtual media, click here. Then I get this one. And then choose a file. And it's on our download folder, right? This is the latest one we download. I have actually two. So which one you see here? This is called this is called uh, a build number. So this is a 198 build number. This is 20. So this is the latest one. And also you can see here, customize A19, right? So select this one, open and then map the drive. So you map it in immediately, it's gonna show you here. It's connected, right? Map the drive. So what are you gonna do now? Just close it. It's already mapped. And what do you should do? Now you should do reboot the system, right? If I go to the escape button, click yes, okay. And then press control, alter delete, right, for reboot. But you cannot do press control, alter reboot from your from your keyboard because if you do that, it's gonna take the command, it's gonna lock your laptop screen because the keyboard directly work with your laptop. Now you're working on remote computer, right? So in that case, what you should do? Just go to the um, keyboard here and just move it here. So control, alter, and then del, delete. And just cross it. Now it's, it's nice. So you have CD and it's gonna be now boot from CD. You see here, configure memory, now it's rebooting. The server is rebooting. And so actually it already is supposed to be, um, but I didn't do nothing. This was just booting automatically, but there is options to go choose the boot options. F12. I believe F12 or F11 on the screen, it shows for booting. So you can choose from there. Um, I just need to be wait whenever it shows F11, I hit F11, but I'm not sure why it's my keyboard is not taking. Oh, okay, it's, take, it's to F11. See, entering BIOS boot manager, it's took right now. So there's some configured disk have been removed from your system or are no longer accessible. Please check your cables and also ensure all this card presents. Press any key to continue. Okay, any key to continue is fine because I think I have issues one of the drive. So I'll remove it later on. That's fine. Because now we are installing uh, Okay, so within short time, we're gonna see the BIOS options. So it's gonna take time, uh, you have to wait. So it will show you the options 
from where you want to actually boot. So you can select the drive. All right, so now you have options to choose, right? So BIOS boot menu, you have to click here. And then scanning for device, please wait, may take several minutes. And now it shows you the list, right? Normal, so with your keyboard arrow, down arrow, go to the virtual CD because we attached the virtual CD, right? Virtual CD, hit enter. Now it's gonna be boot C, it's gonna be booting from 19, see here, 19, right? Hit enter. Now it's loading from your CD. So this will take um, in some, sometimes it takes like 10 minutes, sometimes five minutes. It depends on the server performance. So it's still running. Um, so it needs to be finished the whole line. And then there, after that, it will show you the uh, half window yellow and half window gray and it will load some other files on the background. So we have to wait until then. So look like it's almost done. Uh, just completing this, there's another steps needs to be done. So we have to wait. Okay. So now it's gonna be load the whole thing up to here. So it's halfway done. We need to complete this. So after it's done uh, up to here, then it will give you another window for doing the installation. And after you install, then you have to do the configuration. So we'll do it together, no, <clears throat> no issues. All right, so we got this screen. Uh, that's what we are expecting. So hit enter and then F11. It's gonna be scan your system. It shouldn't be take that long, actually. I'm not sure why. All right, so we got this. By default, the first partition is showing yellow. That piece is selected. And if you want, you can just, if you want to install, say this one you want to install, then you can select this one with the drop, uh, uh, down arrow of from your keyboard. But actually, we want the first one, right? the smallest one, hit enter. Now it's scanning again. So based on our target where we are right now, so we configure this one, I drag, we configure RAID, we are installing, uh, so number three, right? And number four is to have a virtual machine create on the local storage. But I want to show you something before we create this. So after the configuration done, I'll show you. So let's see. 
Okay. So it says upgrade because the reason is um, already because already this hard drive has an operating system, ESXi. So it's found ESXi there. That's why it says upgrade. Asking you, you want to upgrade? You can do the upgrade, uh, but I'm not going to do the upgrade because I'm, I want to show you guys how like brand new installation. That's why I'm going for this one. So he, just move your, um, click your down arrow of, uh, key, uh, from your keyboard and then hit a space bar. Then you're going to select installation, which is yellow and hit enter and use default and then the root password. So it depends on you what kind of password you want to use. But I would recommend use the same password for all. Okay, password match, hit enter. Now it's scanning the again, scanning the system. All right, so F11 install, F11 install. It's not gonna take that long. Sometimes it's finished within five minutes because everything is already loaded from the city. Now it's just installing. And we have to wait until it's finished 100%. So, all right, so it shows um, reboot the server, right? But remove the installation media before rebooting because if you don't remove it and after reboot, if it is attached still, then the server gonna think you are trying to uh, install it again. So that's why you need to remove it. Anyway, whenever you press reboot, it's gonna reboot, remove it. But for make sure, you can say, uh, go to the media and you can say, unmap drive. Unmap drive. Yes. And now close, see now it's unmapped, zero, right? Hit enter because the instruction is done. So now, what? You are done. So installation is done. Now it's rebooting. So you have to wait until it's reboot. And after that, what do you have to do? You have to, okay. Configure it, right? So for configuration, what's our plan? What should be the name? It's master ESXi host, right? So whatever, what's the plan? The plan is actually here is I have three hosts. That's why I have a lot of names. But anyway, uh, you can say master host or host zero one, whatever you want. Now you can say master host zero one because on top of that host, we're gonna create a sum. We need the five ESXi, we don't have it, right? So we're gonna create um, five ESXi. How? We're gonna have a nested ESXi environment. So through the nested ESXi, we will create uh, another five ESXi to have a complete, to get a complete flavor. So name doesn't matter, it's up to you. How are you gonna name it? It's rebooted, that's why it says reconnecting. Uh, most probably, this one is up to date. Six five five six five five. Sorry, six five six five six five is up to date with this version. Like with this, um, this is R six twenty. So in this model, with this model, this is the latest one. It's gonna load. Okay, uh, so now it's gonna be load the hypervisor. So after it's loaded, then we have to configure it because it's just brand new installation.
I'm just waiting to boot it up. All right, so uh, the uh, ESXi is loaded already. And you see here, it's found an IP address with the last octet is 219. It's and DHCP because actually I don't want to have a DHCP IP address. So based on our plan, we're gonna provide the IP address, but I'm not gonna go with this IP because at my home, I have a different plan. So it doesn't matter. I'm just giving you an idea to have this. If you want, you can follow the completely this if it's matching with your, um, if it is matching with your, what it's called, um, your uh, home route or like network or something. So you can follow the exactly same thing, but I'm not following this because I, I'm gonna provide 11. IP address is 11, but almost same, just only the one, uh, the next IP, next number IP of this. All right, so the most important thing is how I wanna configure it, right? So escape button, and then you're gonna see uh, F2 is customized, right? So I'm hitting F2 from my keyboard, and then I have to provide the password, the one I provided when I installed it, right? and hit enter. Then you're gonna see it's gonna be load. Okay, so here's the very important thing to configure it. After install, you have to configure it. So configure net uh, management, configure management, hit enter. And then network adapter, NIC, right? Network adapter, BM NIC zero. If you hit enter, you see here the first NIC card. So I, this is a physical machine. I don't have that many, um, I was expecting if I can have like multiple uh, NIC card, but I have only four. It's also multiple, but I need more actually, if I want to do like redundant, like two NIC teaming, two NIC cut together, but now I don't have that much. So I'm just using one for management, hit enter. And VLAN. So VLAN actually, most of the people, they skip VLAN because it says optional, but should have, you see here, VLAN ID. If you have any specific VLAN ID, use a specific VLAN ID. If you use a specific VLAN ID, what it's, it, will, it will do. So this SXI will be able to manage only that VLAN IP subnet. Otherwise, nothing acceptable. So in most of the case, most of the people, they skip it. They don't gonna configure it, but I would recommend you to configure it, but with 40952 to access all VLANs. 4095, hit enter and hit enter. And then go down IPv4 configuration. So the IPv4 configuration, um, the middle one is selected because it's now using dynamic IP, right? Uh, we don't want dynamic, we want static. So down, one more down and then hit, hit space bar. So the, it doesn't select it, then go one more step down with the K right row and then remove. So I'm going to hit 11. And subnet mask is fine, 2552552550. Default guard is one, everything is okay, hit enter. And then IPv6, we are not using IPv6, I'm going to disable it. See here, it's selected and disabled. And then hit enter, and then go to the DNS configuration. So all the DNS configuration actually, what I should do based on my plan. Obtain DNS server address host automatically or use the following. So actually use the following, hit enter. Uh, sorry, space bar that is selected. And then what should be your primary DNS server? So primary DNS server should be, but it's not exist yet. The primary DNS server is not exist yet. So that's why you should have your default gateway as a default a primary DNS server or maybe you can use, okay, I have a plan to have four, number four, it's not exist. And on the second one, you can say 192.158.1.1. But it's supposed to be, based on our plan, it's supposed to be 10.4. It's different subject to two DNS server, right? As alternate one, you subscribe to the secondary one. But none of them is exist. In that case, you should have first, the default gateway here as the alternative. 
Whenever you have the whole environment, then come back again here, just change this DNS options, okay? But the first one we said primarily this one, if it is failed, then it's gonna be checked this one. So we know 100% is gonna fail because we don't have it, right? I'm gonna build it. <clears throat> and host name, host name, whatever the host, is it master host, okay. And master host zero one. Say master host zero one. Hit enter. And then last one is custom DNS suffix. So our DNS name, like, the Active Directory is not built yet, but we have a plan to have our own Active Directory. When, what should be the domain? It's our pre-plan, right? So domain name, we are planning um, ELS.com, right? And if you want use, just put it use, based on your plan, hit enter. All right, and we are done. Then what you should do? Everything is done, then escape button, and when you hit the escape button, it's gonna give you another option and asking you, do you want to change and reboot the host? Yes, I want to save it and then reboot it. Apply the change. So yes, Y, press Y and it's gonna be reboot shortly. And you have to wait until it's done. So it's loading. You have to wait until it's completely loaded. So it's start it's starting loading the BM or SXA file. So the OS is loading now. Maybe it's gonna take another uh, four to five minutes. So it's loading. And now we have the latest version, the 20497079 is the build number. And this is the latest because BMR is not releasing anymore. 6.7, they stop it on October 15, 2022. And now this 6.7 is end of life. Now they are focusing on ESXA 7 and ESXA 8. They already released 8. All right, so it's loaded. We have the static IP address. Now let's check it out. So from here, type https colon slash slash 192.168.1.11, right? Hit enter and advance and then proceed and save. Oh, wow. The interface is different. Let, let me show you another thing. I have some other uh, ESX install. 192.168.1.12. That one is not up to date. See here, the interface. This is actually old interface. And the last update of ESXI 6.7, they changed the interface a little bit. So root the username and password is root password. All right, so when you first time logged in, make sure you uncheck it. PMR, customer experience improvement program. Never ever join, okay? Hit okay. All right, so we have it, storage. If you go to the storage, we have only, it shows only the, uh, what is called, the drive is selected for installing EFXI. But we have another uh, drive we created with 2.4 terabyte something, right? I would read five, but it's not showing here. So you can say new data store. Uh, BMF, add an extend or existing. Okay, click next. Oh, not this one. Back. Mount, okay. Okay, so the only thing what we can do, you know, the for first time, because I don't have any space and I don't have any options to claim, uh, to claim the other disk, because I have only one host. So 
So what I have to do? Either I have to have a space on my local this one, data store one, because I have some other data store, it still exists because I cannot like have the other one now. Manage the system. So I have to add the shared drive, the NAS storage, then I can have my, based on my plan, I have to install virtual machine for domain controller first, and then at least one DNS server, which is this one, right? Five. And so Active Directory, I'll have a complete separate video, which is gonna be the second, um, what is called the second video maybe, the uh, uh, Active Directory and DNS server. Wow, so, like uh, what is called? You can say series two, or maybe you can say episode two. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys actually how you can create a virtual machine and how, and also the the uh, uh, two virtual machine actually. One is for Active Directory, and this one, and another is for, uh, sorry, this one. Another one is for DNS server. And whenever we have these two, then uh, number five, six, we're gonna create a jump machine, another virtual machine. So I need to create three virtual machines and I need a space. I don't have enough space. What should I do? So I have to add a third party storage, right? Separate storage because I don't have, and also I have some internal storage, but I am not able to claim it now. I'm not able to claim it. So how are you gonna claim it? Whenever you have a B center, you will be able to claim it. So later on, so I have to come here, right? So just wait in the second video, I'm gonna show you guys these three. And then on the third video, I'm gonna show you how to install and configure uh, 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 vSAN. And then whenever we have all up to here, then on the fourth video, well, maybe on this video, I'm gonna show you actually how you're gonna add this one. And after you add it on the fourth video, I will show you actually how you're gonna claim the disk you have not showing right now. I'll show you on that video, fourth video, okay? All right, so. So now in here, what, what should you do? So timestamp, make sure you, your time, you see here in 1927, it's not the current date and time. So you have to have an NTP server or maybe you have to have, say start, stop manually, uh, start and stop with the host. And then NTP server, uh, we have a plan to have our active directory as NTP server. You can say 192.168.1.2, but it's not exist anyway. I'm just saving right now. And I'm going to say start it. Action. Should show me start, okay. Okay, st the service is stopped, right? Edit settings. Uh, use the network protocol. Okay. I have options to save it, but on the action button, refresh. February 8th. Today is February 8th. But the time is, you, you, we need to change the time. Time protocol. It's okay. If you cannot change the time and you'll be getting hard time to add this machine with the B center because your time is not matching with your B center, right? So system host. Okay, so go to the manage, date and time, action. Uh, I, I'm not sure, this is not maybe stable version, right? NTP is supposed to show you NTP, right? And then you should be able to change it, the time. Not giving me options to change it. All right, so if it is not, then you can change it from here. Every time it's by go, by default, it is fine. But the time,
is the time is 2.23. So 2.31 is 2.31. The time is okay. But UTC time is different time. So it's using actually UTP. And we can change it easily whenever we can add it on the base in the server. And hardware, license, if you have any license, you can assign it, service, packages, services. So let me see NTP daemon is top. NTPD, okay. Uh, just I'm just trying, but it's not matter. You have to have it right now. See, it's running. NTP service is running. So I just ran it from there. All right. It's running. And storage. So the important thing is storage because right now we need to have at least four virtual machines, right? Three virtual machines we need for one is for domain controller, like which is Active Directory, another one is for DNS at least, another one is for our jump machine. And then the fourth one is for our uh, appliance, it's the appliance B Center, because we're going to deploy the B Center. But ultimately, B Center is a virtual machine, right? So we need four, and all four we need space. So how are we going to have the space? So whenever you do the partitions formatting um, a new server, maybe you can have more storage on your the SXA partition, then you can maybe have four machine on the local this data store. Otherwise, what do you have to do? You have to, if you have, but I have it. If you have a WD cloud NAS storage, then you can just launch it. I have it, so I'm going to launch it like with the IP address. And I'm showing you how you're going to do that. Okay, so whenever you have this, and you have to go to the share. And on the share, you have to create some storage. So I have already NAS 01, 02, NFS 01. You can create it, just click, click here and you can create it. But I have already, so let's, let's say this one, NFS 01, right? So NFS 01, I created it, that's why I have it like, like this. So whenever you create it like this, like add this one, and then share name is NFS or, uh, or NAS, whatever you want. It, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. And all those things gonna be off. And FTP access off, only the NFS access on. And also you have to go to the configure options. And then the host, you have to provide star. That means you, you can use the same, you can mount with all ESXA host and apply. So that is now you're getting. Oh, and also another thing, make sure right is on. Okay, so now just copy this one. I'm just copying this one and I'm going to go back to the my host store, right? So I'm going to add a new data store, mount NFS data, so net, net, network file system. So NES, network attached storage, and for protocol is NFS, Network File System, NFS. So NFS protocol we have to use. So you have, you have to select NFS. Next, name. So I, I can say NAS01, whatever the name you want, you can use it. And the server. So server means I just copied whole thing. But what do you have to do? You just need the IP address of it. You just need the IP address of it, right? Okay, that's it. And share, what is the share? You just need to have a share, just only the share, nothing else. So up to here, like slash NFS slash NFS01, right? So NFS3 is supported, click next, that's it, and finish. See, it's added here. So now we have a NAS storage, and this NAS storage is 
already you have free 2.68 terabyte. So you can build your machine in here, but ultimately our goal is not to have a virtual machine running on this storage because that cloud storage is pretty slow. We're gonna run only one machine in future. Which one? Because we have a plan to have a sand storage and that sand storage machine we're gonna build on the shared storage only. And all other machine, whatever machine you're gonna build now on the shared storage, we're gonna move it later on. We're gonna move it later on whenever we have the complete environment. Just remind, I, I just give you a reminder. The, the reminder. So later on, whenever I move it, you're gonna can recall it. Okay, yeah, we, uh, the first video, I said we're gonna move it, right? So right now we don't have any options. That's why you're gonna create a machine on a uh, uh, this this NAS storage, and this NAS storage is pretty slow storage. So if you have a full machine, the performance will be very slow. That's why um, I don't like to have it because it has only 500 megabyte of RAM, which is nothing for like in the current time. So anyway, so now we have storage. You can create a machine and we have everything. So that's all I want to show you on the first video. So what we did so far, we configure uh, RAID system, we configure the I first we configure ILO, and then we configure RAID, and then we install ESXi. After you install the ESXi, we where after after install the ESXi, we configure the ESXi. So in the next video, what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a virtual machine. So that's how we're gonna learn how we can create a virtual machine. Plus, we're gonna implement Active Directory DNS of the jump machine. And then the third video, we're gonna show you vCenter server deployment, installation and configuration. And after that, we're gonna add the machine on to the server. And then from there, we can maybe claim our disk, the, the disk we have here. So that's all for our first video. And if you think this video helped you, to build your own um, infrastructure or your own home lab, please give a big thumbs up. And if you are new in my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to share with your friends. Thank you, thanks for watching.